Hey, what's up, everybody? I hope everybody has had a great week. Uh, today is Saturday. I'm not going to be posting tomorrow because I get the uh, very unique, more or less unique to me, privilege of going to my very first Christian concert, and uh, it'll be none other than Skillet. Uh, Skillet has become near and dear to my heart over the last few years. Uh, I followed John Cooper, the, the lead singer of Skillet, and his podcast. And I, I've got John Cooper's book I've been reading. Uh, so uh, one would actually surmise that I am a fanboy of Skillet, which actually goes into the title of today's message. So uh, if you're just joining in, uh, I highly recommend you go back and watch the last several videos that I've done in the book of John. Uh, we continued the book of John. Today we're going to be in John 3, uh, 22 through 27, and entitled Message Fanboys. So, well, Jesus just finished up his uh, conversation in scripture with Nicodemus. Uh, we just went through John 3, 16 which is one of the more famous, if not the most famous scripture verse uh, in the entire Bible. Uh, and then we go on a little bit further from there, uh, Jesus continuing on his conversation. But now that conversation is over, we don't know exactly how much time has passed, but we know that there's a, a little bit of time. And it, it comes into uh, chapter 22 in the following verses. After these things, Jesus and his disciples came into the land of Judea, and there he remained with them and baptized. Now John, John the Baptist, was also baptizing in Anan near Salim, because there was much water there. And they came and were baptized, for John had not yet been thrown into prison. Then there arose a dispute among John's disciples and the Jews about purification. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who was with you beyond the Jordan to whom you have testified, behold, he is baptizing and all are coming to him. Verse 27, John answered and said, a man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. So, this is uh, Jesus continuing his ministry. He comes into the land of Judea and Jesus is baptizing people. So one of the biggest things is there's uh, a problem. And the John the Baptist, his, uh, his followers are, are saying, hey, wait a minute, this is your thing. This is, this is your gig, you're baptizing people. And that guy, Jesus, that, that you testified about uh, beyond the Jordan, on the other side of the jo or uh, on the other side of the Jordan, they're saying, "Hey, he's uh, he's he's baptizing people, and uh, he's he's taking your followers. People are leaving, and they're they're following him, or they're not coming to to you for baptism. They're they're going to the, he's stealing your gig. And really, what it comes down to is." John the Baptist had fanboys and he had fans. He had people that uh, enjoyed his preaching and his teaching, uh, people that were baptized by him. But let's break this down for a little bit. Uh, one of the things that I found interesting that it says in the scripture, it says, now John was baptizing in Anan near Salim because there was much water there. And I found that interesting. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I served in Iraq in 2004, 2005. I was in uh, Kuwait for a short time. I was in uh, Iraq for a little while. I was also in Qatar for, for a little while, uh, about a month or so. And there was a, a time period when there was tiny little ponds all over the place and come midsummer those ponds started to really shrink uh, we hadn't seen rain in months nothing not a drop not even one little bit uh, in fact very few days of actual cloud cover sometimes you'd see clouds but 
it wasn't like it was a, a cloudy fall day. That just didn't happen. So it was interesting to me when I was reading and it said that there was much water there. And I decided, well, okay, well, where is it? Where is, uh, where is Anan and uh, near Salim? So I did find, uh, it took me a little bit of, of time to figure out where this is. Uh, Anan is just south of what was known as Samaria, which is interesting because Jesus goes through Samaria on his way north uh, during uh, his, his, uh, his missions. And one of the things that I found was there's a tiny little lake and then the Jordan, and then it runs into the Dead Sea. Most, not all, but most of the main populated areas follow uh, the Jordan River down. Why? Well, because it's the desert and there's not a lot of water that you can use. So people need water to survive. They need water to bathe and to wash and uh, water to drink and all that stuff. So this is obviously a, a point of uh, a, a little area that gets water from the Jordan. Um, and because water is so sparse there, it, it definitely shows the, the route that people would take so that way they, they stay near water. That's not really a important fact. I just found it a, a fun fact and, and something that I, I decided I wanted to look into. So one of the things that you, you look at here is uh, they were talking about cleansing and the word is, I believe it's written in Greek. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's Greek. Uh, it's uh, katharismos pronunciation. So one of the things that this word has a, a few different meanings. Uh, it means the cleansing of a woman after childbirth, uh, it means the cleansing before meals, um, ritualistic cleansing, but the most logical uh, definition is obviously the one that stands out. It means the cleansing by baptism or baptismo, which is full immersion. Uh, and really what it comes down to is the, the cleaning of your sins. And John's, John's disciples don't quite they don't quite get the message. John has been telling them, listen, I'm not even worthy to strap his sandal straps. I, I am I am nothing. He, he is everything. He is the Christ. He is the savior that was foretold in scripture. But people follow who they follow. People like who they like. And one of the things that I, I heard recently is the, the group of people that's the hardest people to evangelize to are Christians. Well, why is that? Look at what's going on today in the world. We've got uh, the progressive movement in Christianity that is starting to get a little bit farther away from scripture. They're starting to pick and choose what they want to follow, what they don't want to follow. Uh, there, are, there are people out there who are uh, taking the doctrine of the Trinity and they're, they're molding it, they're changing it. You've got health and welfare, prosperity gospels, and then you've got the name it and claim it gospels. And really what it comes down to is you've got all of these different people who are choosing uh, different motives, different worship styles. You've got Catholics who do their own thing. You've got Methodists and, and Episcopals that do their own thing. But really what it comes down to is if you are following scripture, you will be able to see who are the wolves and who are not. Now, John is obviously not a wolf. John is the herald. He he is the one that is going forth, uh, teaching repentance and, and baptism of uh, forgiveness of your sins. 
but his followers don't quite understand. It is really hard to go to a Christian or, or go to someone and tell them, hey, so I heard some things that your, your, your pastor had said, and there are some things that are very concerning with, with what was said. And I just, I wanna point out some scripture and I just want you to be aware of what, what they said versus what scripture says. That doesn't usually end well. And John says something at the end here. He says, a man can receive nothing unless it is given to him from heaven. Everything we have. John, John is not taking any of this for himself. He is humble. Uh, John, Matthew Henry says, no man can take true honor to himself. And, and John's doing that. John understands that he is nothing. He has nothing. Anything that he does have has been given to him by the Father. He's, tr he's trying to tell his people, listen, Jesus is the one and the only. And in the next couple of verses, we will see that conversation continue on. John says, I'm not, I'm not here baptizing of my own accord. And he points to Jesus. We, we all think that, oh, I've, uh, there was a, a quote not that long ago from an influential person that said, uh, you've got your business, well, you, you didn't make that business, or you've got this, or you didn't, you didn't do whatever. One of the, we have to be careful about allowing pride to enter into our hearts. We become so prideful, not only about what we have, but about what we believe. We as a, as a nation have become so prideful that no one can have a difference of opinion anymore. And we're not willing to listen anymore. We forget scripture where it says, be slow to talk and swift to listen. We don't do that anymore. Now, if someone has a difference of opinion, we shut them out. We're not willing to listen. We're not willing to extend a hand across the aisle. We're not willing to hear what the other side has to say or why, or their point of view. And I'm not talking about the difference of what fact is and what fact isn't. Fact is, is Holy Scripture. But when you see so many false teachers out there, false prophets out there, fake prophets out there, and if you were to try to go up to some of their followers and tell them, hey, this is, this is not accurate, you're going to get pushback. Why? Because they're fanboys. And, and their hearts don't want to hear the truth. And they don't want to hear the truth because they are putting that individual above Scripture. Scripture says that we will come to a point when it will be about the itching ears and pastors will be teaching and preaching in a way that itches the hearers ears. It, it brings their emotions up and we see that today because if, if we were to actually look at what's going on in a lot of these fake churches. People aren't opening their Bibles. The, the quasi so-called pastors aren't reading from scripture. If they do, they're taking it out of context. They're avoiding the idea of sin and repentance. They're, they're talking about sowing seeds, which really in, in the, the context that they're using it is about sowing their their own seeds it's about getting themselves rich and people are pouring out everything they have for these false teachers because they're not willing to see the truth they have put these individuals on such a high pedestal that essentially these people have been put above jesus christ himself and it's sad 
and we don't know exactly how deep down the rabbit hole this goes for John's followers. We don't know if John's followers left John eventually and to follow Jesus. We don't know how many of them truly accepted the message of Christ. Uh, we don't know how many didn't accept the message of Christ. What we do know is right here in scripture, they go to, to John concerned that, that so many are leaving for Christ. It's so hard to evangelize to Christians when they find a pastor that they like and they, they listen to that pastor and it's so dangerous when people aren't opening their own Bibles. And I will always tell you the same thing that was told to me. If I say something that doesn't sound right, I'm human, I'm gonna make mistakes. I, I pray that uh, whatever I say is, is bringing glory to the Father, not myself. Obviously, I'm not doing this because I, I think I'm gonna get rich because I know too many pastors who certainly aren't rich. Uh, I know that it brings long hours. Uh, I know what I know what is coming in the future. Uh, I am prepared for the idea that eventually I might get canceled because I'm uh, teaching and preaching Christ. But I know, I know what the truth is, and I know that the truth is Christ, and I know that the truth is in Scripture. And while I don't. I'm not technically reading from the Bible. I am reading from a computer screen. I've got a whole library. My Bible is right here. I've got books, everything I've got. I just don't have a pulpit to set it up on. But if your pastor doesn't even open the Bible, if, if your pastor reads a verse and leaves out a section of the verse, we call it A and B sections, if they leave out a section and continue on, something is wrong with that. Why are you omitting scripture? What does that say that you that they are omitting, that they don't want to talk about? Scripture is there for correction, for reproof. Yes, it's, it's longer, but scripture is infallible. There, scripture does not need to be changed. And anybody who feels the need to change scripture is looking at scripture through the eyes of society instead of looking at society through the eyes of scripture. And that's not easy to deal with. Persecution in the church is very real. And I say that it's very real, not because of our are growing issues here in the United States, but the persecution in the real church, in, in the body of Christ, which means everywhere, is growing substantially. Persecution in different countries, where people are not just being canceled, but their lives are being canceled. They are being murdered for their faith. And people who are willing to die for their faith being martyred for their faith. I look at I look at those who are upset about John and I wonder how many now today are willing to die for their pastors. People love their pastors so much. People people following these these pastors up on stage with with giant almost pains me to say it but there are pastors who preach with giant roller coasters on their stage with elephants on their stage pastors who preach with people balling up money and throwing it at them like they're workers of the night it's horrible it's horrible these pastors are making millions and millions and millions of dollars. Million dollar homes, millions of, multiple million dollar homes while their congregation gives what very little they have left. 
and it's about truth. See, John understood the truth. John believed in Christ. And he says, a man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. We look at our football stars who are like, oh, I'm number one, I'm the greatest uh, football player ever. Man, you didn't, you didn't build that talent on your own. I'm the greatest singer of all time. Wicka, wicka, wicka. Man, you were given that gift. You were given that talent by God. We have talents that are meant to bring glory to God. Nothing we have. God might allow these million dollar pastors to have these millions and, and hang out in their bajillion dollar homes with their four or five jets. But I tell you what, for people that think that that is the gospel, this is the best life now. And what's waiting after might not be so great. Me, I believe what Christ said when he said, you will be persecuted in my name. You will face troubles, trials, and tribulations. When Christ tells us these things, it's not something we overlook, it's the truth. John knows it. John is explaining this to his people who are upset that he's losing fans. And John's telling his people, no, you, you, got it, you got it all backwards, you got it twisted. I'm helping build the kingdom, but it's through him that you get there. I don't have nothing. John says, I don't, I don't have anything. Everything I've got, the Father gave to me. God allows these things to happen. God allows people who are awful and deplorable to get rich. And while for some of us that might not seem fair, fun fact, fair is not written in the Bible. It never says life is gonna be fair. In fact, from the fall of Genesis all the way through to Revelation, it says, while you live and breathe, there's gonna be issues. You're gonna struggle. People are gonna hate you. People who follow Christ are gonna be hated. Why? Because they hated Christ first. Well, that doesn't sound very uplifting and reassuring. It's not meant to be. The uplifting and reassuring part is the fact that this ain't everything. This life is not all that there is. A good friend of mine wrote a book, The Best is Yet to Come. Truly, the best is yet to come. Death is only the beginning of the best adventure we could ever have in our lives. Eternal joy and worship with the Father. So how do we get to there? You have to accept Christ in your heart. You have to repent and turn away from your sins. And it's not just accepting Christ as your fire insurance, but he is Lord and savior. You have to repent. And you have to get into his word and understand and, and grow. Accepting Christ is not the, the end of your journey. It's the beginning. We are justified by Christ, but every day we have to be sanctified. The old sins must be pushed away and we must grow in our relationship with the Father. We must allow the Holy Spirit into our hearts and change us into a new creation. We may be poor. We may hurt. We may suffer. We may struggle. 
but in our weakness, the Father is made strong. Everything we have, good, bad, and ugly, is to bring glory to the Father. How do we do that? We never lose track of our hope. We never forget to love our neighbors, to love our friends, to love our family, to pray for those who persecute us. We will never give up, never stop running the race, and never stop fighting the good fight. Jesus is our hope. Jesus is where we should find joy. Joy in our suffering, because no matter what we are suffering through, no matter what we are going through, Jesus can be and should be exalted above all else. Why was Job hurt through all of that? To show his friends who, G who God is. God's promise, you may not get rich here on this earth. Job was given back everything plus what he lost to Satan. We will get everything that we've ever lost and ever wanted and more in heaven. But when we are struggling, when we're hurt, let people see Christ in us. Let us look different because we should be different. We are ambassadors for Christ. And though we live in the world, we should not ever conform to it. But whether we're multi-million dollar football players, we are multi-million dollar football players because God allowed it to be. If we are homeless and we're preaching on the street corner with our Bible, whether we stink to high heaven, God allowed us to be there and we should be bringing glory to God no matter where we find us, A or B. It doesn't matter. Everything in between. Everything in between. You you want to live your, your best life now? Fine. That's fine. Me? I want to live my best life tomorrow. I want to I want to live my best life after I'm pushing up some daisies. You know, would I love to have a few extra dollars in my pocket? Sure. I would love to be able to go on a vacation. But ultimately what it comes down to is that's, that might be what's in my heart. That might be something that I, I, I would love to get a new lightsaber or I would love to get a new action figure or something. But that doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme of things. Those million dollar homes will fade. That car that you buy, next one will come out and you'll be like, ooh, pretty, shiny. Are we looking at what's important? John's disciples weren't. They were, they were following John and there's nothing wrong with following John. But if you're a fanboy and you're putting someone ahead of Jesus, whether it be your pastor, an actor, a president, uh, whomever, if you think that they are the greatest thing since sliced bread, you better check yourself because ultimately it comes down to what are you worshiping? Are you worshiping a person or are you worshiping the God of the universe, Jesus Christ? Just something to think about, especially when it comes to politics and ideals. 
actors and actresses and what people say and what people do, be careful. Be careful who you become a fanboy of. And I'm not even sure if fanboy is even considered politically correct. I don't care. I don't care. Go out. Get into your Bible. Read your Bible. Make sure your pastors and preachers are talking correctly through scripture. Read your Bible. You, you follow a, an actress or an actor who says that they're Christian, read it. It doesn't matter if they're Christian artists or Christian actors, read your Bible. Is what they're saying lining up with scripture? Don't be blind fanboys. I, I can't stress that enough. Don't be blind fanboys. Oh, I'm gonna go tomorrow and I'm gonna be a fanboy and I'm hoping to get a little John Hancock in my book. I'm, I'm excited for the opportunity of, of maybe seeing John Cooper, that'd be awesome. If not, it's okay, I'm sure it'll be a great concert. Go out, spread the love of Christ. Don't forget to spread the love of Christ. Check in on your friends and family. Love all, serve all. Love y'all.